Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment. And hey, in today's episode, I'm going to show you how I turned this bar right here with this particular finish, nice and shiny, into this. Check it out. If you want to see how I made this, watch today's video. I hope you enjoy it. It's got some special techniques that I tried out today. And uh, hey, Keep watching. Hey guys, I certainly appreciate you joining me uh, on this uh, silver pouring journey. And uh, today I'm gonna focus less on the actual pouring and more on the finishing. So I'm gonna show you a technique that uh, is new to me that I'm going to try out. And when I say new to me, take a look here. This is only the second silver bar I've, I've ever poured. Uh, and so I am at the just the beginning stages of my silver pour journey. And so I am totally in the experimental phase. And so I'm going to start with a little story. Hope you don't mind a little story. But when I was a kid, I was a baseball player, probably like many of you watching this video right now. And what I did when I was a kid, I would tend to go to the library and one of the librarians handed me a book on Ted Williams. And Ted Williams, in my opinion, uh, is one of the best hitters to ever play the game of baseball. And I read that book and I did my very best to emulate Ted Williams, copy his style, his technique, and his mindset. Well, fast forward to 2023, here I am starting my journey as a silver pourer and I am doing my best to uh, soak up everything I can from folks who are the best at silver pouring. And one of those people is named Backyard Bullion. I'm sure you've seen his channel. If you haven't, I'll put a link down in the video description. But Backyard Bullion, in my opinion, is one of the best. So what do I want to do? I want to emulate him. I want to try his techniques, put my own twist on it, make it my own. But uh, hey, when you want to try to uh, get better at something, you emulate the best. Uh, so uh, today I'll be using this little child size hammer here. Uh, and I don't even remember how many ounces this is, but the uh, link to this is in my video description. I got it on Amazon. And I'm going to be trying a new technique where I'm hammering this bar to create a texture that I want. My own little twist is this. Rather than hammering the front, and ruining these beautiful pour lines here, or hammering the back where I have it stamped, I'm going to attempt, and that's a big attempt, I'm going to attempt to hammer the sides and see if it comes out okay. Well, we'll see together. Here we go. So that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the ball peen hammer, the ball end. <laughs> oh boy, oh and by the way, I'm using this little rubber device here. This is called a bench block. Uh, the link is also down in the video description, but this is what uh, Backyard Bullion told me to use. And uh, he's been very gracious with his time and answering my questions. Awesome channel, awesome human being, uh, and very willing to help a novice like me, which is uh, amazing in itself that he uh, takes the time. But anyway, I've tried this uh, already on uh, a couple of different pours and different uh, stamping. And it's made a huge difference as opposed to just putting this here on my wooden uh, tabletop here. Uh, so let me show you what I can do. Boy, it takes a little practice getting that aim down. Let's see what we got so far. Not too bad. Maybe a few more. I need to aim better and hit a couple different spots. I'm going to try not to strike on top of strikes already. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Now for the top. Now at this point, I'm just looking at spots where I could see where it's flat. And I'm going to try to aim and hit my spot, but... I'm realizing I'm not as accurate as I'd like to be. 
Okay, so here we go. Got that. What do you think? Do you like that hammered uh, finish there? I can tell you this, it's a lot more grippy on the sides, which for practical purposes, that makes it kind of cool in itself. I did notice that when I kind of hit the edges close to the top here, it kind of buckled up a little bit. And there's a perfect example. The question is, should I take a flat hammer and hit that? Or do I like it and can I live with it? Hmm. I think hitting, taking that flat hammer might run the risk of really goofing it up on the front. But what the hell? Okay. Well, I like it better that way. That way, it's not as jagged there. Hey, it's wild. It's unique. It's a piece of art. And so it is what it is. All right, now to the next step. I'm going to finish this with some liver of sulfur. And I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, no, don't ruin it, T. I'm going to give it a try. Again, uh, what did I tell you at the beginning? I'm at the experimental phase of my silver pouring journey. And um, let's see what I can do. Okay, here I am with some hot water. And as a matter of fact, I ran that through my Keurig. Four ounces through the old Keurig. Now I'm using this <clears throat> liver of sulfur uh, gel here. A uh, couple of, I've learned the hard way that it doesn't take much. So uh, probably just three drops or so. One, two, three, and uh, yes. And if you're wondering, it does smell bad. It smells like rotten eggs, but it's all good. Stir it up a little bit. It's kind of like that Easter egg yellow color. And uh, we're going to drop this in. I hope I don't ruin it. We'll see. Probably should get some gloves. Okay, I stepped away to get a glove. And man, did this thing change fast. Ooh. Here's the, ooh, it's hot. Here we go. Here's the color. It's got some interesting tonage to it. And, but my intention is to uh, use sandpaper and sand off a lot of this tone, most of this tone. So where I want it to stay is in the ripples and the depths of these uh, little pits that were made by me hitting it with the hammer and in uh, the, um, the, the numbers here that I stamped. So here we go. Time to do a little sanding. All right. You know, I, I, I always say it like here goes nothing, but I really don't know what this is going to turn into once I start sanding it, but I'm going to give it a try. Okay, here's we are, where we are now. And I kind of like that. I, you can see the ripples there, the pore lines. I really like uh, the, <laughs> the state of Indiana with the T. And uh, the dot there in the upper left-hand corner, that's Northwest Indiana. Hey, that's where I'm from. And let's see, here's the back. Looks good. You could see the numbers very well and the letters. Now, the sides. Do I leave it like this? Or do I give it a little sanding? What would be more interesting? Mm -hmm. Decisions, decisions. Okay, I think I am going to take this paint stick and I'm gonna wrap this sandpaper around it like so. So as I sand, I get the higher spots but I don't get the bottom of those dimples and see what that looks like. Well, we'll see. There's only one way to find out. Looks pretty cool. I might do one more thing. 
just for the heck of it. And I know Backyard Bullion wouldn't advocate for this, but I think I'm going to throw it in the uh, tumbler just for a minute and see if I can't get the, the shininess uh, to pop, which would be a nice contrast with the dark spots. <laughs> Let me try that. Okay guys, so here is the uh, finished product. Uh, nice and shiny. I gave it a little bath in baking soda water to uh, neutralize that liver of sulfur. And I am pretty pleased with the pounding on the side. As I mentioned earlier, it is a little more grippy to the hands. And, um, you know, it's a little bit of a contrast uh, to this one here. The one on my left was my very first ever silver pour uh, as, as far as a bar and a mold. And this is my second. So, you know, just trying different techniques to see what I like, see what I'm good at, see what I prefer, and see what you guys like and prefer as well. And this one came out to be, it was a little heavier pour, 3.6 as opposed to this 3.3. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? What do you like? And uh, right now I think I'll probably keep experimenting uh, and to see um, what I can do and to kind of push the limits of what where my knowledge can go and where my techniques can go. Uh, also, I've been working on these channel uh, rounds. Uh, as many of you know, if you've been watching my channel, uh, I'm trying to figure out, and by the way, this is a different one that I made, a new one with some crazy killer, uh, colorful rainbow tone to it. And so for you tone guys, you might really prefer this one. The, the aqua really popped in this one. Uh, but anyway, I, same thing. I've been kind of uh, experimenting to see uh, which techniques uh, I'm best at and which ones look the best. A lot of you uh, like this uh, particular uh, tone right here with the uh, little vintage look to it. And a lot of you like uh, the just the, the nice bright shiny one so i have a few more to make i think one i have seven here uh, all together i think i'm gonna make 11 and then uh, from there uh, probably do an auction uh, i've never done a live video uh, but one of the channels i really like is called silver oceans matter of fact there's a sticker right over there silver oceans he did a live auction it went really well and perhaps I will uh, figure out how to do a, a live auction and do something similar in the near future. Let me know in the comments also if you would show up to something like that. All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on this uh, silver pouring journey. And as I try out different finishing techniques, and I really appreciate you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Toot. Okay.